let's talk about client, uh, client side architecture issues that you might experience with WebRTC that you didn't with other architectures, right? Like most of the legacy apps that I talked about, those cattle auctions, those wine auctions, they were all RTMP, which was TCP only, right? That was the only option we had. TCP can start to lag over time. You can see AV, uh, there were, there it wasn't that RTMP didn't have its issues, but it was, you know, uh, when it came to ports and uh, access through firewalls, it was a simpler equation. I remember all those, I, I know how many of you uh, remember those issues when RTMP first came out, when I was working at Schematic down in LA, a big agency that, you know, we did projects for Disney, ABC, uh, NBC, you know, invariably, if anything was RTMP based, you know, some big wig higher up, you know, was behind some corporate firewall where RTMP wasn't coming through, right? And so um, that's, you know, uh, when they started to make the shift to HTTP streaming and away from RTMP, that made a huge difference, right? Because HTTP was, you know, you know, pass through most firewalls, right? And so, uh, unless they were doing packet introspection and looking at what exactly was coming over that, that port and that protocol. But WebRTC is a blend of TCP and UDP. You know, UDP is, is what it's, you know, it's going to give you that lowest latency and if you don't have the proper turn implementation UDP can be problematic right if I'm on my cell phone and you know I'm behind some asymmetric asymmetric uh, net then the, that could be problematic to be part of a WebRTC uh, you know, session that's in progress right um, but turn servers uh, uh, help uh, mitigate that. Some vendors don't have uh, turn support though, and that's that, that's that's a problem. Uh, so you want to make sure that you know you, you you do your due diligence there. Vendor lock-in, uh, WebRTC is a specification that has a single correct implementation, and I'll talk about this in a moment. Uh, Dr. Alex, I'm actually going to be highlighting some work he's been doing uh, with some uh, traction that to you know move to a more of a consistent implementation, at least from a client side point of view. Um, adaptive bit rates, some browsers support the simulcast and like I mentioned already, BP8 SVC could be a future option. SVC in general as a concept could be an option, right? If we start to see that come out. I mean, most, you have to remember that WebRTC stems from, you know, original P2P uh, concepts, right? And so, you know, servers, if they were involved at all, were just stun servers to, you know, negotiate the IP and, you know, clients could talk over P2P directly with each other. So, you know, serverless infrastructures, and if that's a requirement, then you're only going to have so many options when it comes to trying to get, you know, high quality out to more, you know, to someone that can't receive that high quality. What are you going to do? Uh, you know, if your P2P is only one-on-one, -on -one, then, you know, you got more options there. Uh, but, you know, if you're having, um, uh, you know, P2P sessions that involve, you know, more than one person, more than two parties, um, it can start to get complicated. Camera and microphone access. This is just really more of a UX thing, but again, something you have to play in, just like you would for a Flash app, right? A lot of examples that you see out there that ship with WebRTC examples, you have to go into browser settings to change the, the camera and microphone. Of course, you can expose it in JavaScript, but it's just something that you're gonna need to give attention to, right? Selecting the camera, selecting the microphone, adjusting their properties, those APIs can, can you know, it's just like any, like Flash had its own learn, learning curve. I'm not gonna say WebRTC is any more difficult, but, um, it is one of my complaints. Uh, I'm often working with my clients, web devs, and uh, I and don't take this the wrong way. Uh, if you're one of those those HT, uh, you know web devs that expects there to always be an SDK, but you know I had to do plenty of dev where there wasn't real SDKs where things were made easy, right? You had to build things from the ground up in ActionScript. Uh, you know you had to work with native classes and you know build out your own thing, right? And I'll talk a little bit about that in the future. And I find that's probably one of the biggest pain points whenever I'm working with web devs and WebRTC is that you know, capturing, uh, getting the media capture, getting all the parameters right with bit rate, frame rate, getting those controls into place can be a big problem. Uh, big problem only because it takes time. And if you're, you know, used to always having an SDK that makes things simple and you're used to just, you know, hey, I'm an, a web app developer. I know how to do this X, Y, and Z. And you start talking about media capture APIs with them, then, you know, that's where, you know, again, special specialties will evolve, but, you know, a lot of like, if you need to hit the ground running and you don't have time to, you know, go through those learning curves, then you're, you know, that, again, that might influence your decision about how you're going to build your next web or web RTC app.